Yeah, I think IAM as an identity and access management is a technology set that, that's changed uh, over the last 20 years quite considerably. It does include a number of technologies that are all focused on uh, ensuring people get and have access to digital resources. So there are two ways to look at IAM. One is it's, it makes up a third of the overall IT risk surface. The other way to look at it is it's the foundation for everything. If you don't know who walks through your door, if you don't know who logs into your server, who accesses your data, it doesn't matter whether you have your, the right patch level uh, installed on your service. That's really the, the foundation for everything. Without it, you will fail on your all, overall cyber strategy. The notions of automation, which is, you know, operational efficiency. It's a great thing, get you the accounts you need faster. Great idea, awesome thing to do. It's also security, right? Make sure you have the right access. If I give you the wrong Active Directory group, you're looking at the wrong data, right? You have the wrong access and that's security. Cleaning up access when people leave, dealing with things like orphans, um, that's pure security. And we're a big part of the security umbrella as well but it's also about compliance. Um, compliance costs money and takes time, so let's put automation there, let's make things compliance ready. So we're one of the few pieces of technology today that I'm aware of that sort of serves, it's really three buckets, you know, automation and operational efficiency, security and compliance, all at the same time. The, the question is how do you bring in security aspects in the decision making of an organization? So. If you have a security team and you're the, the business and the IT organization does what they think is right, they follow their strategy and they tell the security guys, make it secure, that might not work in, in the end. You need to bring in their view uh, when you execute your strategy and maybe that might mean not working with a certain partner, not going to a certain cloud provider or not doing certain business in the cloud. So you have to bring in the security aspects in the everyday work of the company. There's no, no way we can say like we are like 100% sure we are secure. There's always new challenges, new uh, virus, new malware that comes, um, comes up. Yeah. But uh, I think we need to take a risk-based control uh, uh, approach in terms of uh, depending on where the users is logging in, where they're from, what uh, type of, uh, for example, files or data they want to access, and to determine what uh, controls mechanism that needs to be in place. I think it's important for people to realize that identity management in general, it, it's not a project. It's not something that you're just going to do and then you're done. Um, it, it's, it's an ongoing process. Uh, it, it's, it's like security can't be just achieved. There is no checkbox. There is no one deploy of a, uh, of, of a tool and you're done. It's, it's kind of how we do business. So what we, what we like to determine it as is basically the path from zero trust, which is what organizations and IT teams are working with now, to basically try and basically you've got to prove to me that you're safe before we'll actually let you access that, that solution or that repository. Um, to a path that users want, which is which is zero touch, and then off the back of real risky behaviour, so things like geo velocity, whereby um, I can't access data in a certain location based off me physically not being able to get there in that point in time. So a good example of that might be me sitting here in Hong Kong today versus someone sitting in Sydney trying to access the same data as I am at the same time. Physically, it's not possible for me to get there in that location. The seconds away that they're accessing that data. So that would be a geo-velocity breach whereby we could lock down all data on the device because we know that there's some type of identity breach going on in the background because someone's accessing data in, the same, in a different location. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of time people use like uh, transformation as a buzzword, right? Yeah. But ultimately we have to think about what exactly it means and what objective this is trying to meet, right? 
And from the IAM perspective, it's, it's, I think it is for the user to be able to access to the company resources as a more efficient and easy way. For example, nowadays people may need to have like a password and then multi-factor authentication, different tokens, different password for different systems. And if you need to work remotely, there's a lot of other like uh, uh, devices that you need to implement and then get hold of which is, uh, I think, is, is not efficient for the business. I think it's more on the business transformation programs. I mean, this is an ongoing process. It's not just an update because everyone knows, I mean, the world is changing. I mean, the people come in, the customer join, maybe leave, and I mean, lots of operations every day. So this definitely, I mean, is not, a, I will say, it's a long-term procedural exercise instead of just a one-off maybe one of security update. So from a business transformation standpoint, where what organizations are going through is they are having more and more applications now than five years ago, and a lot more in the coming five, 10 years. That type of growth, accessing 10 applications, and let's say you have 100 users accessing still the same 10 applications. The type of access, the number of access you're managing is 100 times 10. But tomorrow, we're talking about, okay, most organizations are um, at least thousands of users. And you, if you times that by 100 applications, a thousand times 100 is a lot to manage. The, the world is changing. Um, people are deploying um, software automation, bots, automated processes, chatbots, assistants, uh, all kinds of new types of, of uh, processing. They have accounts too. Um, so in some ways, this is why that, that, that challenge is never done, because the environment keeps changing. We're bringing in new technology and new pieces and new forms of access that all still need to be governed and still need to have their life cycle controlled. What is new in the recent years is robots working in the, in the environment, artificial intelligence, servers accessing other servers, and there's a lot less transparency and governance around things. This is a, a much weaker topic. So let's say you have a, a robot performing some business function uh -huh. and you, let's say you have governance in place and you have a person owning this robot. Nevertheless, when the, the owner leaves the office in the evening, the robot might work all night long. Now you have that person leaving the organization. What happens with the robot? One interesting uh, area that um, uh, continues to challenge businesses is that of unstructured data. Um, and it's an area of product focus for us over the, over the last couple of years. And that is that we're really coming to the, to the uh, rather startling conclusion as an industry that we, even if we have good control over the application, so let's just say we have the best management and control over SAP ever. Right? Uh, we know who has access to what, why they have it and everything. Somebody then does an export report from SAP, they store it in a spreadsheet and they put it on a public share. Right? Doesn't matter how well I protected the application, I've now got uh, uh, private data sitting in an unstructured file, as we call it unstructured, yeah. sitting in a file on box.com. So we have to manage that access as well. So the um, obligations of, of access are more complex, the data is more complex, more people are involved. We now have a single piece of data that is exposed to more people. So if you look inside a, a classic enterprise application like Salesforce.com, it has an extremely complex and fine-brained access control model. Why? Because it stores a ton of super sensitive data. And we've got to make sure that application has to make sure that the right people have the right access. And how does it do it? With complex profiles and data sets and a complex access control model. Right? So how do you manage that complex access control model? You use a tool like SailPoint to do that. The, the challenge is, uh, one is the, the people. That's actually quite, quite easy. You, you know uh, the people who work for you and then the further away they are, from, from your core organization, the more fuzzy and vague it gets. We mentioned uh, third parties. Uh, the other side is the infrastructure. What data do you have? And uh, in the end, it's about bringing these together. Functionality, but also data. Just the data alone. What data do you have? Uh, who owns this data? 
What criticality does this data have? That is quite a challenge, and especially when you look at where is this data stored. We have been focusing on the business applications over the last 20 years itself. That's just the, the top layer. When we look at the infrastructure, which servers are working on for these applications, which databases store this, which file systems store the data, log files, where are the logs stored, uh, and then we have the push to the cloud environment, which makes this space even more complicated. Uh, bringing all this together, this this end-to-end -end stack of the application, including cloud, including log files, everything, um, that is typically not understood. For the best practices, I will think it on two ways. On one side is the satisfactory for our, I mean, customer or our users. Because, I mean, for access management, definitely this is not only performed by, I mean, the IT department, the IS department. It requires the business, the business managers, I mean, to reveal their access. So their satisfactory is very key. And the other hand is, from the back, is like, I mean, the IT members. I mean, they operate the system, they operate the access management uh, platform system. That one, we also need to ensure that it is easy to use. What we're trying to do is really provide that balance between what IT want as security versus what the end user want, which is an easy experience. But ultimately, you have an obligation and a responsibility to your employees, um, to your customers, and to your suppliers in complex supply chain that we now have. Um, to, to, to do basic account management. Um, what we do in identity governance, um, it's actually quite basic. We're really controlling a life cycle of an account. So that account is created based on some business driver. It's managed through a change life cycle. So when I move from one department to the next or from one job to the next, I don't carry my permissions with me. And then when I leave, those permissions are taken away. That is basic administration.